let's get okay all right hey welcome back let's get back into Baldur's Gate I'm gonna be quiet again this episode I hope you guys like it subscribe and enjoy and leave a like if you please it helps the channel How will she do that? With her powers, Peach. Don't go bothering my pigeon. He's mine. Keep him safe. Listen to him coo. Till I get hungry or some such. What's it to ya? Him? Nah. Then catch one on your own! The mark glows, but you feel nothing in response. Your illithid power is beyond reach until you rest. for a joke, why don't ya? And don't let the lads snatch him up. No telling what they'll do to him. Bring him back when he's all tuckered out. Here's the key. Pigeon's all yours. <laughs> Look at this. I'm quite saved. A joy to see a familiar face in such a precarious setting. I guarantee the story of your daring rescue of my person will live on for eons. I intend to do just that. A trusty invisibility potion goes a long way in a place like this. <laughs> we mustn't tarry, but I hate for our friendship to end here. Please, won't you meet me once we've both slipped the goblin yoke? Why, by design, my friend. How better to learn the ways of a people than to live among them? I dare say the experiment has proven most fruitful, too. I'd be happy to share my findings... ...once we've found somewhere safe to parley. Smashing! Soon, my friend. Soon we can share the flagon of something liquid and a tale of daring do. I'll slip away when the coast is clear. See you soon, my friend. I simply can't wait to pick your brain! Some drow wizard in Moonrise want to look at you for a scrying eye. Certainly, best won't to keep be, out of that beautiful snitch as viewer, it'll spoil What do the they fun. need to be looking at any of us for? Is what I'm saying. We're all on the same side. Although we're going to set the true soul on fire. They're Cozy setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. 
I was just settling in and reviewing my latest findings. Mind flayers, cultists, and, of course, your esteemed company. <laughs> Why, I'm practically an expert. They've tentacles, you know. Quite shocking. The druid Halson had some kind of mind flare specimen in a jar in his quarters. A replica, no doubt, but truly fascinating to see up close. Here, on the Sword Coast. Impossible. That... that can't be. You're either an excellent storyteller, or you've experienced something quite exceptional. Hmm. Tell me, have you noticed any residual psionic malaise since the alleged encounter? Curious. Elithids, their technical name, form a hive mind. One shouldn't be able to hear their dark whispers. Unless... That's quite impossible. You'd have undergone ceramorphosis by now. As there's not a tentacle on your head, I can only assume you haven't been infected. If what you say were true, you'd be a mind flayer by now. You? Infected by a mind flayer? <laughs> Ridiculous. Isn't it? Perhaps that's for the best. I'd be irresponsible not to debunk such a strange claim. If I just peer in your eye, I could quickly... Oh, my dear sweet... I mean, yes. I suppose I can. I'll need to research the particulars, however. Give me a bit of time, and I'll have this little issue sorted. Speak slowly. I'm finding it quite difficult to concentrate with my condition gnawing at my insides like a teething displacer kitten. We all have our burdens, one way or the other. What's on your mind? Apart from finding me an artifact to consume, which I assume you're pursuing with the appropriate urgency. That is most gratifying to hear. May I? Thank you. Magic, it's like a lullaby that sings to sleep the demon inside. A metaphorical demon, I haste to point out, but no less dangerous. And no less bound to wake up again to continue its ravages. Such is the nature of all monsters. Grateful as I am, the course of our camaraderie is much better served by not taking that particular detour. Not just yet. Sincerely, though, I understand I ask a lot from you with few answers in return. But in time, all will be told. I obtained it in Waterdeep. Nothing there comes cheap. I've known people who are hungry for power, but Gale takes it a bit too literally for my liking. I wonder how he does it. 
why he does it. <laughs> I'm sure all will be revealed in time, but I don't like it. A waste of perfectly good treasure. It's simple. Just find a vampire that will drink your blood and turn you into a vampire spawn. Their obedient puppet. In theory, the next step is to drink their blood. Once you've done that, you're free. And a true vampire. People think the biggest threat to a vampire is a cleric with a stake. It's not. The biggest threat to a vampire is another vampire. They're scheming, paranoid, power-hungry beasts. So why would any vampire give up control over a spawn to create a competitor? Trust me, it doesn't happen. Who knows? Drow, mind flayers, death? Hopefully not ours. But maybe answers. If we can convince the right people to talk. I've already apologized. What more do you want? Unless you're looking for another nibble. No innocence. You have my word. Only villains that we need to kill anyway. After all, you know what I am now. I can fight with all my weapons, teeth included. And if I happen to drain the occasional bandit during a fight, what's the harm? They're just as dead. That sounds eminently reasonable. I shall wait patiently until you suggest we dine together. But until then, no more late night surprises. You have my word on that. What's to tell? I was sired by a vampire named Cazador. Everything before that is so long ago, it's ancient history. And everything that came after, well, um, that's. Rather not reflect on it. I was a magistrate working to keep the peace in Baldur's Gate, imprisoning troublemakers, that kind of thing. I can't remember much, truth be told. Centuries of torment will do that to you. I was attacked. A gang of vagrants, a tribe of wandering Gur, took issue with a ruling I'd made. They beat me to death's door when Cazador appeared. He chased them off and offered to save me, to give me eternal life. Given that my choices were eternal life or bleed to death on the street, I took him up on the offer. It was only afterwards I realized just how long eternity could be. Why do you insist on exhuming the past? I was a slave. A vampire spawn. Kept by the Tsar family. Perhaps I still am. I was never able to resist their commands. But now, I've been conveniently lost. They won't ever control me again. Gale slurped that thing up like a horse with a carrot. I hope he got what he needed from it. Something the matter. Wait. <laughs> it hurts. A 
joyous little affliction that visits me with screaming agony on occasion. I'd be lying if I told you I know what causes it. But don't worry. Can't hurt you. Only me. It's just an old wound that hurts me from time to time. Nothing to be concerned about. It's nothing to do with the tadpoles, at least, in case your imagination is in danger of getting away from you. It's just something I have to live with. Positive. You can trust me on that. I know. I don't understand how exactly, but I felt it go to you. It's important. Keep it close. It's not the sort of thing I can just tell anyone. Let's see if we can build up some trust first. I do, but the artifact has a will of its own and powers to enforce it. It likely won't let me take it back. The best I can do is to stay close, bide my time. Eventually, I'll need to take it. Then, I'll have to see what can be done about that. Gail is positively voracious. Well, let him suck up all the magic he needs, as long as he doesn't snack on a Githyanki silver sword. I expect I am your first. Chuk. I suppose I am as alien to you as you are to me. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. Decadent, then. Lacking in economy. Like so much of this world and its undisciplined people. I understand much beyond your comprehension. More to the point, I know the cure for our condition. It is imperative we locate a crash. You do well to observe more and question less. Yes, in great detail. It starts with a fever and memory loss. Then you start to hallucinate. Your hair falls out and you bleed from every orifice. Your bones will change form. Your jaw will split to allow room for four great tentacles. All skin will turn to gore, and be shed to reveal new flesh underneath. Then you have ceased to exist, and a Mind Flayer is born. Because I do not intend to let this happen. Not to me, and if you stick with me, not to you. We must find my kind and be rid of the Parasite. It's as simple as that. The first symptoms should have long since started, though. That is what puzzles me. Yes, if you give it no further thought. But anomalies lead to surprises. Bad surprises. Besides, what hasn't happened may yet come to pass. I will 
will be quick with my blade. First you, then the others, then myself. Your minds intertwine. You sense a touch of uncertainty, a touch of disgust. Just in time. You are transforming. Yes, you have. I saved you before. save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. We haven't much time. So listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it. Nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you. But for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. for the fate of Faerun. A fight we are losing. For now. You can change that. But only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. setup you have here. I'll just make myself comfortable. Thank you so much. My research turned up a rather brilliant technique that seems quite actionable. It's not too deep. Just behind the orbital socket. I could attempt an extraction. I've a needle in my tunic, after all. I 
assure you, I've dreamt of it a thousand times over. Volo carefully holds one of your eyes open and begins to prod uncertainly with the needle. The needle finds the gap between eyeball and socket. Volo frowns and begins to push. Pain shoots through your body as the needle snags on your optic nerve. I think I have it! The needle seesaws back and forth, plucking the nerve like a harp string. Oh, bother. There's some obstacle in the way. I shall need a more robust implement. Volo carefully withdraws the needle from your eye, then reaching into his bag. He produces an ice pick. Volo slowly brings the ice pick closer to your eye. Now. Cold metal presses against the skin beneath your brow. And then... Tap, tap, stab. I agree. It's a feisty critter. Just... A Volo tears the pick from your brain with a violent jerk. Your eye plops down into the mud. Tret. He pauses, looks down at your eye, and recoils slightly as it sinks into the mud. to be an amount of cosmetic damage. Please, try not to overexert yourself. You're in a rather fragile state at present. I can't help but feel partly responsible. Perhaps there is something more I can do. Take this. A far superior relic to that old jelly you were chained to. Try it on for size. And, um, it was very nice to have met you. I'm sure you'll sort out your little brain problem one way or another. Far away from here, if you've a heart. Terribly sorry, my friend. Ta! My apologies. Huh. Not quite myself just yet. I had the strangest dream last night. A visitor came to me. A vision of unparalleled beauty and power. She told me she was watching over me. Protecting me. And that our tadpoles could prove beneficial if we embrace what powers they have to offer. An uncanny apparition. Not entirely sure what to make of it. Very curious. In all my readings on the effects of illithid parasites, I've never come across any accounts of correlating dreams between infected parties. Another unique quality of our predicament, perhaps. Hmm. Are you inclined to take these visitors at their word? Nothing wrong with maintaining a healthy suspicion in such matters. Still, it might be wiser to keep an open mind on the matter. Our visitors' promises of aid might yet bear valuable fruit. I had the strangest dream last night. There was a visitor promising me protection and all sorts of delicious powers from the parasites in our heads. Given our shared affliction, I suppose you had a similar dream. Excellent. Now we can see what these tadpoles can do for us. Exactly. Waste not, want not. Even when it comes to mind flare parasites. Now, was there anything else? Mm. 
Welcome to the League of the Lone Eye, my friend. Not to minimize the pain of Volo's poking and prodding, but I promise you'll be used to the prosthesis in no time. Besides, I find it gives one an air of mystique. No one's more intriguing than a woman with one eye. Did you have any strange dreams of late? Vivid ones. Damn. I was hoping my imagination had gotten the better of me. But this must be something more. This dream companion wanted me to use the tadpole. Use its power. Whoever it was claimed to be an ally, but... I don't know. It seems like we can't escape this mess. In the waking world or otherwise. I had a dream, as we all did, I suspect. Someone came to me and promised to protect me while claiming that the parasite could empower me. The parasite has taken root, it would seem. Every word, every promise, it is geek deception. A wise choice. These parasites are a threat to be destroyed, not an opportunity to be exploited. D3. Again! Again! Make it squeal again. We're juicing it up. The beast came in here with those robbers, killed Dink and Mince too. Boss is thinking of serving it to the wargs. And it makes funny noises. We made it squeal.
again. No time to waste. Try something else. Life will prevail. Don't. Battle favors the fearless, making my move. Pardon the viscera. One should cherish all of nature's bounty, but goblin guts are quite far down the list. You aided a bear without knowing if it would savage you. <laughs> a true friend of nature. Or perhaps a lunatic. Either way, I owe thanks. I am the druid Halson. Yes, but just Halson will suffice. Unbecoming to demand honorifics from the one who saved my hide. 
parasites in your head that... You mean you have one of them? Father, preserve you, child. You're infected, aren't you? The Mind Flayers spawn. But... something's different. You're aware of the monster inside you. You don't bow to the Absolute like the true souls do. How is this possible? You weren't speaking lightly when you said you needed help. Let me tell you what I know. I've been studying these parasites for a while now. Ever since I discovered these so-called true souls are infected with them, someone is using very powerful magic to modify these tadpoles. They're using them to exert control over the infected. I'm sorry to say, I can't undo that magic, which means I can't cure you. But that doesn't mean I can't help. I didn't find what I came here for, a way to remove the tadpoles, but I found the next best thing. I found out where they come from. That must be where these enchantments are placed on them, and it's where you'll find your cure. I overheard that the cultists are sending all of their captives to Moonrise Towers. Innocents go in, true souls come out. Given that all of these true souls are infected, it has to be the source for this magic. If you want to find a cure, you must head there and discover how the tadpoles are being manipulated. I wish I could, but there's still work I've yet to finish. Blood I've yet to spill. I've no right to ask more of you, but if you could help me, I'd be free to join your journey to Moonrise. I cannot allow these butchers to threaten my grove. The natural order must be protected. My thanks. If you prevail, I'll owe you the debt of a lifetime. Rare is the beast that survives decapitation. Help me eliminate the drow Minthara, the hobgoblin draw Ragslin, and that perversion of a priestess, Gut. They are the ones holding these parasites together. Remove them, and nature will cure itself. There is no safety, not while this rot festers. Once it is cut out, once the grove is secure, then I shall leave. May Sylvanus guide your hand. Focus on the leaders. That's all it will take to restore the balance here. Awake and alert.
think the dwarf is ready yet? I'm hungry. Tormentor! Protect someone. Only the guards are allowed to do that, as this one is about to demonstrate. Need something else? Pleasure. Feel that one later. 